Welcome to our practice. Let's remember that a practice is not about whether you feel like it or not. It's a practice. So just unrolling your mat, grabbing your chair, make sure you've got your straps, your blankets, and knowing that at the end of it, we're going to feel better. If this practice doesn't look like the right practice for you, there are hundreds of other practices and they are organized in playlists below this video. So grab your stuff and let's get to it. Let's get to this transformative work and rejoice when it's all over and our bodies and minds and hearts uh, have greater ease, greater spaciousness, and we can continue shining that light on for the rest of our day. We will be using a chair and we will start standing up. Feet spread the width of the mat, nice and parallel. Roll those front shoulders back to so the center of the chest is open, this area that we always keep protected and closed. And let's close the eyes. Visualize those roots growing from the soles of the feet down, down, down into the center of the planet. And visualize through the crown chakra that energy extending up to the heavens. And then lifting the hands and pressing the palms together. Inhale. So I put a little sliver of a curl-up mat on the chair, just for comfort. For the hands, an option for greater comfort. If you have one, go ahead and put that on. And let's come straight into Ardha Uttarasana. Hands on the seat of the chair. Walking the feet back. Walking the hands forward. And then lowering the head down. Look at your feet and immediately spread the toes from the big toe to the little toe. Make more and more space. And then lift the arches of the feet, press the heels down. Look at the knees, lift the knees, lift the thighs up. And as you're lifting the thighs up, also press the front thighs to the thigh bones, and you'll feel the buttocks moving back, the hips moving back with that energy. And of course, the trunk coming forward, the arms stretching. And then lifting the head, turning the hands, and coming forward, lifting the heels up, finding a chair plank. So draw the belly button in and tighten the core, broaden the shoulders, and then coming forward, bringing the pubic bone towards the chair, and coming onto the tops of our feet, and finding an Urdhva Mukheshvanasana, upward dog. Keep lengthening those collarbones. Pressing the buttocks towards the chair and lifting the belly button up, lifting the chest up. And then rolling over the feet, turning the hands back onto the seat of the chair, making sure that the feet are the width of the mat. And again, Ardha Uttanasana. Re-spread the toes if they've gotten tight. And again, lift the arches of your feet, lift the inner ankles, 
Look at your knees and lift the knees and the thighs up. Push the thighs back and feel the buttocks moving back as the trunk extends forward. And then looking up, turn the hands open and coming to another chair plank. So lift the belly button up, make the core strong, tighten the legs, broaden the shoulders, and then bring the pubic bone towards the chair. The shape of the feet is changing and we're now coming onto the tops of the feet, the dorsal feet. Squeeze the inner knees tightly, broaden the shoulders, Lift the chest to the sky, head back. Udva Mukha on the chair. And then rolling over the feet, the toes, and back to Adha Mukha or Ardha Udanasan. Make sure the feet are really the width of the mat. The hands back on the chair, the legs straight, the arms straight. More and more vibrancy coming as we awaken, as we come into our bodies, into our breath, and into the noticing. Keep pressing the front thighs back. Stretching the trunk forward. And then looking up, one more of these. Turn the hands open and come to a plank pose. Firmness. And then pushing ourselves forward, rolling onto the dorsal feet. Press down into the hands to lift the chest higher, shoulders back, breathing here. And exhaling back to Ardha Uttanasan or a kind of Ardha Adha Mukashvanasan. Looking at the feet, spreading the toes again, lifting the inner arches, lifting the inner ankles. Push the front thighs back, stretch the trunk forward. And then looking up, if you walk the feet in a little bit in order to gently come up and out of the place. All right, Uttita Trikonasan, but with a Pashvakonasan waist stretch to the pose. So I'm going to do it so you see the back of the pose. We're going to keep the mat, the, uh, the chair, exactly where it is on the right hand side of the mat. And we're going to step our right leg towards the chair and move the left leg back so that we have the legs of Trikonasan. Make sure the front foot is lined up with the back foot. Make sure this knee is rolling open to the right so we want to turn in. So you have to grip the muscle up and roll it so that the knee really faces forward. Don't let this front buttock poke out. Press it forward. All right, from here, stretching the arms, inhale, exhale, reach, now the hips move to the left, and reach and hold onto that railing with the bottom arm, that bottom right waist is stretching, keep gripping the front knee and thigh up, rolling it open, and now stretch the left arm to the sky, lift the inner arch of your back foot and push into the outside edge of the back foot. Feel a new firmness to the back leg. And then turn this top arm 
and extend the arm over, finding the rating of the chair. And you'll feel a significant stretch in the top waist, the left waist. Now see if you can also stretch the bottom waist again. And then the top waist. And then the bottom waist. And then the top waist. That's it. Now turn the trunk as much as possible so the chest is turning to the sky. And three. And two. And one. Lift the arm back up. And coming back out. And releasing. Okay, let's move our chair to the other side of the mat now. So that we can do with the waist stretch on the left hand side. So left leg forward, right leg back. Line your feet up with each other. Look at this front knee and its tendency to turn in until we've adjusted it by gripping the leg and rolling it open. The front buttock, the left buttock, pushing forward, not poking out. Stretch the arms, lift the chest, inhale. And exhaling to the left, the hips moving to the right. Hold on to the railing of the chair and stretch the right arm to the sky. Now move your attention to the back leg. Lift the inner arch of the back foot. Press into the outside edge of the foot. Squeeze the back inner knee. And then turn this top arm and extend the arm over. Find the railing. Feel the beautiful stretch of the waist. Keep the grippingness of that front leg. Don't let the front body go and poke out. Keep pressing it forward. Now stretch the bottom waist and re-stretch the top waist. And then again, stretch the bottom waist, re-stretch the top waist. Good, now try to turn the trunk up to the sky. That's it. And three, firmness in your legs. And two. And one. Lift the arm back up. And back out. And exhale. And ready, sink. All right, time for Viradhasana 2 into Parashakonasana. So moving your chairs around to the right hand side of the mat with the railing at the back. And now we're going to step our right foot over and our left leg back. And here we may need to adjust the chair. The important part is that when you're down to your maximum, this part of the chair in today is supporting the inner thigh of the back leg. If you need a block to help you to sit, go ahead and take a block. Just make sure that this knee is not turning in. So lift the inner arch, roll the inner knee to the outer knee. As you're sitting, don't just collapse. Sit but have firmness and see how when I place the block, the chair lost connection with the inner thigh. So moving that chair back to adjust so that always the inner thigh is feeding the chair so that it's not dropping down, but it's lifting and moving in the direction of the outer thigh and into the outer foot. And then if we stretch the arms, we feel Viradhasana 2. And now we're reaching to the right. Keep the firmness of the back leg coming down. The right hand holds the front leg of the chair and the arm is pushing against the inner thigh. And we want our left hand to hold the raving of the chair. So now we're really working on the twisting aspect. Trying to turn and twist the trunk so that our hearts, our sternums are not facing the earth. They're being turned up towards the sky. If you can lower the right arm a little bit, go ahead and do so. If you can move that left hand back on the railing a bit, go ahead and do so. Keep that back leg firm, turn and twist. And now that the twist is in place, release the left hand, bring the elbows to the ribs, and extend and find Pashvakonasana. Keep 
Keep twisting. And three. And two. And one. Excellent. Bring the arm back up. And from here, coming into Viradavasana two. And then releasing, making our way back out. All right, on this next side, I'm not going to use a block. And if you need to use blankets, just one blanket instead of a block, basically adjust for whatever's right for the vehicle that you're in. So we're going to the left-hand side. So we start to bend that left knee. Remember, we don't want it to come in, keeping it open. And we're adjusting the chair so that the chair is always supporting here the inner edge of our back thigh to avoid it from collapsing. So that the inner thigh is moving to the outer thigh, is moving into the outside edge of the foot. And here we have our Vida too. And now we're reaching to the left, coming down, the front arm holding the leg of the chair, and the back hand holding the railing. That front arm is pressing against the thigh, helping us to twist. And of course, the back arm on the railing is helping us to twist also. Keep the integrity of the back leg. Keep turning and twisting, turning and twisting. And when we feel that we've twisted to our maximum, then release the top arm, elbow in, and extend. That's it, finding Pashvakonasan. Stretch both waists, and keep turning the trunk. And three, and two, and one. Bring the arm back up, and making our way out through the other two. And then back up. And releasing. Okay, let's bring our chair back to the front of the mat. And find an Ardha Uttarasana. So hang on the chair, feet back, the width of the mat. Lift the inner arches, lift the inner ankles. Push the front thighs back and stretch the trunk forward. And then looking up, moving the hands on the chair and coming through plank. And then coming into an Urva Mukha onto the tops of the feet. Roll the shoulders back, lift the chin. And then rolling through the feet, and back to an Ardha Uttanasana or Ardha Alunkashvanasan. Spread the toes, lift the inner arches, grip your thigh muscles up, and press the buttocks back as you stretch the arms forward. And then looking up, bending the knees, and you can always walk the feet forward if you want to, or just coming up, and coming to standing. All right, time for a Viravadasana one. So for comfort, you may wish to have a blanket on your chair, or a couple of blankets on your chair. Again, feeling free to adjust for the vehicle that you are in today, knowing that it can change from day to day, and holding on to the railings, stepping the right leg in, make sure the foot is facing forward, 
Look at the back foot, how the heel is lifted. It's not trying to press down here. It's fully lifted and coming towards the buttock. So we are widening the distance between the feet. And here we are making sure that the chair is being felt on the front of that back thigh. And we're rolling that back thigh in. So we feel the front of this back thigh rolling in on the chair. Again, you can always place a block under the seat or a higher blanket, adjusting. I might need to move my chair a little bit forward, actually. And then I move my foot back so that everything's still on the mat. Okay, so the hardest part of a Viravadasana one pose for most people is the tightness that can be felt in the lower back. It's a tricky pose for the lower back. So with the hands on the railing, we can begin to press down and lift the chest up. Now we need to travel inside our bodies. We need to use our minds creatively. So it helps to close the eyes just for a little bit and go right inside to the lowest part of the spine, the tailbone, and move the tailbone forward. Be inside your body and visualize with all of your inner senses the tailbone rubbing against the back of the pubic bone. So keep making that adjustment. Keep charging the back leg, the tailbone rubbing against the back of the pubic bone. Good. Now, as your hands press on the railing, you're not just lifting the chest up. I want you to first lift the pubic bone up, the front of the pubic bone. So the tailbone is rubbing the back of the pubic bone, and you're pressing your hands down, lifting the front of the pubic bone up, lifting the belly button up. Now open those eyes. If you haven't already, lift the chest up, and there's a whole new liftingness that comes from the base of the pose and keeps the integrity of the lower back. That's it. Now keep moving that tailbone forward, rubbing the back of the pubic bone, and press down to the hands, lift the front pubic bone up, the belly button up, the sternum plate up. That's it. Good. And three, and two, and one, beautiful. And then let's gently make our way out. And of course, we are going to change sides. So the important part of that pose is being able to go right to the base of the trunk, make that internal adjustment, hold it, and then lift up the hands on the railing, helping us to understand how to get that front to lift, rising up. All right, ready? Left leg in. Right leg back. And the chair is being felt on the front of the thigh. This leg is rolling in so that our hips are facing forward. Taking all the support that you need underneath the left buttock, the left hip. Charge that back leg. Press the hands on the railing down, feel the lift of the chest. Now close the eyes and press your tailbone forward so that it's caressing the back of the pubic bone, the front of the pubic bone, inside the body. So use those inner senses to connect with that. Then press the hands down on the railing and lift the front pubic bone up the front belly button up, the solar plexus up, the sternum plate up, that's it. Good, and then again, travel to the base. Move the tailbone forward, have it rub the back of the pubic bone. Again, press the hands down on the railing, lift the pubic bone up, the belly button up, the solar plexus, the chest up, that's it. Good, and three, and two, And one, exhale, and releasing, coming gently out. So even though we didn't have the hands lifted, we established that entire line of energy from the base, rippling up, and so you can feel that the final thing would be to lift the arms, but all the integrity of the alignments were in place and lifting us into that final lifting of the arms which we're now going to do. So second time, with the right leg. Step that right leg through the chair. 
and roll the back thigh in. Make sure the chair is still being felt on the front of the thigh. Taking whatever you might need for the right buttock, keep rolling that back thigh in. It loves to roll open the moment you stop thinking about it. So roll it in and feel the hips really face forward. Okay, let's keep the eyes open now. And let's move the tailbone forward. Press your hands down on the chair and lift the front pubic bone up, the belly button up, the solar plexus up, the sternum plate up. That's it, charge the back leg again. And now lift the arms. That's it. And five, four, and three, two, and one. Hands back down, don't collapse. Keep that lifting us. And then bending the back knee and making our way back out. And changing sides. Left leg forward. Roll the back thigh in. So the hips are turning to face the front. The chair rubbing on the front thigh of the back leg. Roll it in. Straight in the back leg. Now, first of all, what do we do? We push the tailbone forward so that it's rubbing the back of the pubic bone. And then our hands on the railing, pressing down and lifting the pubic bone up, the belly button up, the solar plexus up, the sternum plate up. Everything is preparing for the arms. Now lifting up the final part of the pose. That's it, good. And four, and three, and two, and one. Bring the arms back down, keep the chest lifted. And bending the back knee, exhaling and releasing out. And finding Ardha Uttanasana. Or some people call it Ardha Ardha Mukhashvanasana with the chair. Feet the width of the mat, the toes slightly turning in, the heels slightly turning out, and lowering the head down. Push the front thighs back as you grip them up. And feel the hips and the buttocks be pushed back as the trunk stretches forward. And then looking up, turning our hands open. We know where this is headed. So coming forward into our plank with control. Don't hurry. Noticing. And then moving forward onto the dorsal feet. And here again, the tailbone moving forward to rub the back of the pubic bone. Now press into the hands and lift the front pubic bone up. The belly button up, the solar plexus up. That's it. And three and two. And one. Rolling over the feet. And back to Ardha Uttanasana. And we can see how Vidavadasana 1 and Upward Dog share that similar interaction where the tailbone has to rub the back of the pubic bone and then we lift the front body. So we start to see similarities between different poses, the alignments linking up. And then bending the knees and make your way back out. And it's time for a little bouncing pose. Ardha Chandrasana. So let's just move this blanket to the side. 
and take our chair, fold it up, and turn it so that the seat is facing us. Okay, so, stay in the chair. There we go. So we want to have the chair on a little bit of a diagonal, and again, the diagonal will depend on the height and length of our legs or our trunk, all of that. The important part of this, this railing is going to be right here at the fulcrum point where the femur bone comes in to the hip socket, guiding this area in so that instead of pushing this area out, which is a tendency for most of us, we will learn through the railing of the chair there to draw the femur bone, the front femur bone, into the hip socket. So let's come in first. Right leg forward, left leg back, make sure your feet are lined up. Again, when we come in and we use the chair, it's different than when we do it without the chair. The entry is different. So we're kind of moving our weight already onto the right foot. See how the back leg, the back foot is light, the heel is lifted. Very little pressure there. And we're placing the railing of the chair at that fulcrum point. Now it's on a diagonal and on the sticky mat, so it's not going to move. The hand goes onto the seat of the chair. And then we begin to lift. Now, use your eyes to check your back foot. So I don't want to see feet like this. Charged legs, toes spread. Lifting, lifting as the front leg straightens. The back leg lifts to be in line with the hip or a little higher, but definitely not lower. That's it. Now, if you're ready for it, this bottom hand can go lower. And the left hand is on the railing of the chair helping you to turn and to twist the trunk to the sky. Grip the legs. The roots of your thighs, where they come into the hips, want to be really firm. They want to be gripping into the hips. And if you feel ready, you can then extend the left arm to the sky and turn the head, gazing at the ring finger, finding Adha Chandrasa. If for some reason this hurts the neck, you can always turn the head down, gaze at the floor, but keep turning the trunk up to the sky. Make sure that left leg stays active. Make sure you keep feeling the purpose of the railing of the chair. And then lowering the left arm down, bending the right knee slightly, lowering the left leg, and gently making our way out. And changing sides. So we're going to move the chair to the left hand side, remembering that the seat of the chair is facing us. Left leg forward, right leg back. Bending this left leg a little bit and moving the weight onto the left foot. The right foot is light. And now adjusting the chair. The railing of the chair finding its important point there. And then the hand to the back seat of the chair. And begin to lift that right leg and use your eyes to check on it. So that you have it lined up with the hip, not forward, not back not too low, but lined up and pushing through the wall of the foot, the toes extended, stretched, spread, pulling back towards you. Turn the trunk up to the sky and if you feel ready, extend the right arm up. Otherwise, you can keep it on the railing of the chair. Adva Chandrasa. Remember, if it hurts the neck, turn the head down, but keep turning the trunk to the sky. Roots of the thighs firm. And then lowering that right arm, bending the left leg, lowering the back leg, and gently making our way out. And exhaling. 
and releasing. Okay, we're going to keep the chair as it is and turn it back to the right hand side for Pajshottanasana, simplified Pajshottanasana. So again, the chair will be on a diagonal, and because it's on a diagonal and we're on a sticky mat, it won't move. So we're going to have our right leg forward and the left foot back. Now there's a tendency for people to have a really short distance like this. I encourage you to go beyond the barriers that you've set yourselves. So really push that left foot back, move it back, step it back, and then move the chair in. And here's the hard part. How do we get the front of the left hip to stay connected to the hip? It's very easy to feel the front hip feeling the weight of the chair, but how do we turn the hips so the front left hip is on the railing of the chair. Then we know that our hips are really facing forward. If you're very bony and it hurts, you can of course put that little um, blanket or mat over it to avoid too much tenderness from that. And then we're coming forward and keep the left front hip feeling the railing. The moment you feel it, Move away, it means your hips have turned away. So you want to roll the back leg in and reconnect. And then walk the hands down. Again, if it turns away, pause, roll the back leg in, reconnect. And so forth. The hands moving down. And when you're at your maximum extension, lower the head. Breathing here. Roots of the thighs firm. And now looking up. Make sure that back leg is straight, loves to bend a little bit. And we begin to walk the hands up, pausing halfway. Make sure the front of the left hip is still against the railing. Now move your left hand to the middle of the seat of the chair. Even if you're higher up, that's fine, just to the middle. And move this right hand to the top of the railing and start to twist. So here we're finding the entry point for Paribrita Triconasan. And the important thing is to try to keep the front body long. So from the pubic bone to the belly button to the solar plexus to the sternum, don't shorten and twist. Lengthen and twist. Lengthen and twist. Lengthen and twist. That's it. Feeling that twistingness. Good. And then if you feel it, you can bring your hand to the hip, your hand to the sacrum. Roll that shoulder back, twist, and then extend the arm to the sky. That's it. And three, and two, and one. Hands back, coming down, facing, and emerging through Pashvatanasa. All right, releasing the chair. And whoop, changing sides, down there. Stepping the right leg back, make sure you have some distance. Don't be timid with yourselves, take that distance. And then place the chair, adjusting it, and roll this back thigh in, so your hip is always feeling the front railing of the chair. Are we ready to descend 
into Paschottanasana. And the moment you feel any disconnect, stop, roll the back thigh in, reconnect the front of the hip to the chair. And then coming in. Making your way gently down. Paying attention to the hips. Parshvottanasana. And then slowly beginning to make our way back out, pausing halfway. And now let's move the right hand to the middle. The left hand to the railing. We're starting to feel the twisting action. Breathe, reconnect, tighten those legs. And now if the body allows, bring the hand to the hip, continue twisting. And then to the sacrum, continue twisting, keeping the line of the front body long, rolling the front of that left shoulder open. And then extend the arm to the sky. That's it, you're there, you've got it. And three, and two, and one. And coming back down through its stages until we find our Pashvottanasan. And then we're slowly, gently coming out and release. All right, open that chair up, turn it around. And come to an Ardha Uttanasana. The feet, the width of the mat, the heels slightly open, the toes turned in. Squeeze the knees and thighs up. Establish a smooth and even breath. And relax all of the facial features. Keep gripping the thighs up, pushing the thighs back. The buttocks are moving back and widening and the trunk is stretching forward, the arms are stretching forward. And then looking up, turning the hands, coming through our plank pose. Don't let the belly button and all of the lower abdomen fall. Lift up, be firm, and then rolling over the feet. Onto the dorsal feet, the pubic bone to the edge of the chair. Now move the tailbone forward so it rubs the back of the pubic bone. And then press down into the hands and let the pubic bone up. The belly button up, the solar plexus up, the sternum up. And then rolling over the feet and back out. And finding Ardha Uttanasana, Ardha Adho Mukeshvanasana. Breathing here. And then coming out. Remember, you can always step the feet in, in order to come out more easily. And it's now time for Prasarita Parutanasana. 
So we are going to turn our chairs this way. So the sticky bits on the bottom of the chair stop it from slipping. And we are widening our legs, really nice and wide. The toes turning in, the heels out. Now lift the inner arches and push into the outside edges of your feet. And from that, the firmness comes up the legs. Roll the thighs in so that as you come forward, your buttocks are widening behind you. Now you can adjust the chair. We're going to hold on to our elbows here and have the forehead on the seat of the chair. If this hurts, a blanket can be nice, of course. Smooth and even breath. And even though we may be feeling a sense of relaxation, which is wonderful, we want to keep the legs gripping. So the thighs gripping up, the thighs rolling in, the sit bones widening. And then looking up and just changing the cross of your arms and resetting down. And widen your feet and turn the toes in, having a little bit more integrity in the feet, really lifting the inner arches, pushing the outside edges of those feet and making sure your thighs are gripping up and rolling in. And then coming back out. Turn the heels and the toes and the heels and the toes and the heels and the toes in. And exhaling. And releasing. Okay. Taking this chair and placing it here. We are now going to sit on the chair this way. The Purna Navasan is coming out. You know what? Let's take this and place it. And let's give a little comfort. I have to remind myself to give the comfort because after a while it doesn't feel uncomfortable, but I know that in the beginning the chair can feel kind of hot. So giving you guys options for that. Okay, so here we are facing the back of the chair. And now let's swing our legs up. The railing on the chair. You're holding your hands to the railing, lifting the chest up. So no collapsing. Lifting the chest up. All right, extend the right leg. Keep the chest lifted. Ardha Paripurna Navasa or Ekapada Ardha Paripurna Navasa. And down. And now the left side. This is vibrant, lift the chest. And down. And again, the right side. And down. 
And again, the left side. Keep lifting the chest. And down. Okay, we're ready for both legs at the same time. Extend both legs. Lift the chest. Paripurna Navasana. Five, four, three, and two, and one. Bend the knees. Come forward. Take a little breather here. And let's go for our second one. Ready? And extend the legs. Lift the chest. Five, four, Three, two, and one. Bend the knees and come forward. Third and final one. Leaning back, chest open and extend. Five, four, and three. And two, and one. Bend the knees, good job. And let the legs slide down. And now you're going to lift the left leg up and put it through the railing, the back railing. So the left leg is in and the right leg is out to the side. And the left hand holds the railing and the right hand comes around, balabadasaning. A simple twist, lift the chest up to the sky. In your twisting us, don't close down. Keep lifting up. Then turning back to the front. And of course, we have to change sides. So the right leg coming in and the left leg coming out. Right hand holds the railing, twisting to the left, hand going all the way around the corner. Balabajasan again. One final twist, so just turning the chair, normally, so to speak, and sitting back down. Line your feet up with the front legs of the chair. So we're going to the right first, I'm doing the mirror image of you. So first of all, just halfway, this hand taking the leg of the chair, and this hand taking the railing. And then if you can go deeper all the way down, go ahead and go deeper, increase it, and move that hand on the railing back even more. Beautiful. And coming back out. And to the other side. So go ahead, turning. Halfway first. Ah. 
and then all the way back down. Move this hand back on the railing, increase that twist. Try to get those back ribs to turn. And then gently coming back out. Bring the arms in front, interlock the fingers, turn the palms out. Just move your feet forward so that the heels are underneath the knees while you do this. Lift up. That's it. Lengthen the waist. And two. And one. Coming back down. Changing the interlock. Turn the palms out. And lifting up. And then coming back down and releasing. Okay, we have the end of our practice coming up. Yay, well done. We have to do a Sarvangasana. Chair Sarvangasana, of course, because we are using the chair. So we're going to need a bolster, maybe a couple more blankets, and that should be about it. A bolster, a couple more blankets, and coming back to the mat. So this is really one of the most beautiful restorative poses. Let's just see the setup. So I'm 5'8", and I use two blankets here. Um, if you're shorter, you may just use one. If you're really small, you may unfold it and just have one for comfort. If you're taller, you may use another. Basically, your hips are going to be here, your shoulders will be here, so this is the length of the trunk. So if things don't feel right, I encourage you to hit pause and experiment and find the setup that's right for you. This is going to be for the shoulders, not the head. Everybody loves to go backwards and arch their head back because they want their head to connect quickly with something. I'm going to remind you to keep your chin towards your throat as you come down so the shoulders are connecting here. And then I have this other blanket here and it's this way, not this way. So lengthwise, so to speak. And this is just to reduce the distance from the blanket to the mat. So it's just a little bit more comfortable on the neck and the shoulders. Again, depending on the vehicle that you're in. So for most people, this is a better setup. So I'm using that setup today. So hip pause if you need to, to place this all in. And then let's come and sit on our chairs and come into this pose. All right, legs up on the railing. And when we go back, we want to move our hips and buttocks forward. This is how we feel safe, because the chair won't move as we lie back. So obviously the head is going back, and so we feel that we're leading with the head. And we start to move ourselves back. There can be a little bit of fear here, totally understandable, we're going backwards. It's unusual. But I want to remind you at some point to bring the chin towards the throat. You're not looking to connect the top of the head to your bolster. It's not a headstand, it's a shoulder stand. So you're going back, back, back down until your shoulders connect with that bolster. Your feet can also be on the railing if you find it a little bit overarching on the lower back. Now let's spread our arms through the chair. So one arm at a time. Reaching through the chair and reaching for the back legs of the chair. And I like to turn my hands open. It really helps the movement of the shoulders, the front shoulders to really open. And then that spirals through the arms and the hands. So the chin towards the throat, the sternum towards the chin. And now if your feet aren't on the railing, go ahead and place them on the railing. And here's the way you want to adjust the hips. I like to have mine right on the edge. And again, this also depends on the tendency of your lower back. If your 
if you have a tendency to overstretch or overarch the lower back, then you'll want to make sure that your hips are really right on the edge. And now, keep pressing those shoulders down and extend the legs straight up to the sky. We are in Chair Sabangasan. There are a few variations. So this is a lovely variation right here with the legs up. And after a few minutes here, we'll come into the second variation where the legs are diagonalized. Keep pulling the toes back towards you, but pushing up through the balls of the feet. Keep pressing the arms down so that the back ribs press up. They will get lazy unless you remind them to press up because they're used to kind of just flopping and slopping, so to speak. So keep pressing those arms down and pressing the back ribs up. And see how this beautifully opens the front of the body. And now let's diagonalize the legs. So go ahead and lower the legs, lower the legs, so they're diagonalizing. Finding the railing, but you're not bending the knees and resting the legs on the railing. You're charging the legs, pulling the toes back, pushing out through the balls of the feet. Keep rolling the front shoulders open. Pressing the arms down and pressing the back ribs up.
both the outer hips towards each other. So let the hips get soft and let the buttocks sag down. Because this will affect the lumbar in a way that we don't want. We want firmness, bolting the outer hips together, firmness in the lumbar. And now we're going to bend our knees and place the feet on the railings. And come to our third and final variation of Bharakonasan in our chair, Salangasan. So go ahead and open the legs apart from each other. Feel the outer skirting of the feet on the railing of the chair. Press the soles of the feet against each other. And then squeeze the outer hips towards each other. Keep pressing the arms down and pressing the back ribs up. And then bring the legs back in towards each other. Release the hands and gently remove the arms from the chair. And then we're sliding down until the hips are on the bolster and the calves resting on the blanket, arms extended. And now we're moving back even further and then gently rolling over and coming out. Almost there, just setting ourselves up now for a chair shavasana. So moving blankets to the side and it may be that you have one blanket here 
or it may be that you have a bolster here. Again, depending on the body type, I'm going to show you what we're looking for. We want, when we lie down, the femur bones to be as perpendicular as possible to the earth. So, it all depends on how long your legs are. If that you're taller than me, you may need to fold a blanket and go higher so that the femurs can come perpendicular to the earth. If you're shorter, you need to remove the bolster and to have a blanket there. Adjusting basically, trying to avoid this action. I mean, this will still be a lovely shavasana, but this is the ultimate because the femurs are plainly coming into the hips. There's no over accentuation of one side more than the other. And so the hips and the femurs for a few precious minutes get the experience of what that is to be just cleanly and beautifully connected. The sacrum and the lower back then connected in a different way and supported on the earth. So looking for this setup and a little blanket for the neck and head. Shoulders rolling back. Arms diagonally extended. And just turn the hands a little bit more until you're really sure that the energy of the little fingers is moving towards the thumbs. And then when everything is placed, it feels just right. The eyelids softening over the eyeballs. The eyeballs receding to the back of the skull. The temples flowing into the hair. The jaw relaxing, the throat. Relaxing into the shoulders. And the shoulders relaxing. Trickling their softness through the arms, into the hands, into the fingertips. With an exhale, release the hips completely.
just gently lifting the hands, resting them on the abdomen. Mm. So we begin to rise up from the depths of our shavasana. And then the palms folding together. Loka samasta sukino bhagavatu. Om shanti shanti shanti. May the universe name love, may the universe name peace. May we help all those that we come into contact with to feel the same. Ooh. As we roll over joyously, knowing that we have accomplished a great deed. Our practice is complete. Well done. Namaste to you all. Have a most beautiful week and see you again soon.